What's happening in my big fat gator pockets? How are you doing today? It's SJB here, and you guys have probably seen Kahimps before. Not just Himps, Kahimps, alright? Also known as Chimps, we can go with that. You might have seen my One Tower Geraldo play before. And One Tower Chimps Geraldo play before. That was absolutely epic. But I think what's cool is this entire map just opens us up for a, a bunch of new Two Tower Chimps challenges. So I figured, let's try a Two Tower Chimps on this guy and see if we can pull it off with probably one pretty ordinary tower, but also with a little bit a little bit unordinary tower. And I think the best way to start is by far with the wizard. Now, uh, as far as positioning goes, you really do have to think really far ahead. What is going to be your best tower long term on this map? Not just round 6, not just round 20, not just against the first my web, but what is going to work on round 90, 98, 99, and 100. The most disastrous rounds of all time here. Uh, but I think this is a pretty good spot, because Necromancer usually works really well on the back of the map, in particular. Uh, and I think it'll kind of go around these loops here at the very least, and kind of get in the way as blooms are coming around the first time around as well. Uh, hopefully that'll work out the way I'm planning it, but of course there is zero guarantees on that actually following through. Now, we're already struggling in here with our wizard. So, our early game is going to be tricky. We might even have to use some crusher action here in the early game just to kind of keep ourselves alive. I'm a little afraid. I used the crusher on round 8, and now I'm, I'm really worried about round 9. I'm going to keep this guy strong to start off instead of uh, first or close or last or anything like that. And I might move him to first in a second here, but with only blue balloons left, I believe we could take them down unless they bunch up in some really weird, odd way. Okay, we do. And the crusher is back. Wonderful. I actually never noticed that the Crusher was time-based, not necessarily round-based. So you might be able to even use this guy multiple times per round, possibly? I wonder how it would work with an infinite regrow farm or something like that. That'd be cool to test out. Now you might be wondering, what's my second tower here? And that is also one of those tricky, tricky questions you really have to ask you. Ooh! Oh, you really gotta ask yourself here. Tricky, tricky! Alright, gotta leave him on first. We got a bunch of blue balloons in here, and I think I have to crush them. Just gotta go whomp. Big fat crush. Honestly, I might not have needed to do that, but I think it was worth it to go for it. Uh, yellow balloons on... Look, round 11 is not too bad. Yellow balloons seem like they're dangerous, but eh. Don't really matter too much. You can tell we took them down. Not too many issues here. I think I'm going to get my next my tower on uh, probably the middle of round 12, maybe round 13. And I got my crusher probably ready on round 12. Yeah, before round 12, this is going to be good. So for your second tower, uh, you really have to think about what you want to buy. Long term! Round 98, 99, 100! You know, those tough, tough rounds, guys. Tough rounds. All right, I'm going to go for the crush. Crunch. Just the yellow balloon. And we got green balloon. No problemo. Another green balloon. No problemo. And we're finally time to get our tower. I've decided I want to go for a dartling gun. <laughs> it's kind of an evil tower. But it's really good. And by the way, if you haven't noticed, you can actually put your tower on uh, uh, any of these crates here. So if you want to get full range across the entire map here, uh, it's really easy to put them on one of these guys. As far as position goes, I'm not really entirely sure that this is necessarily the best spot. But I feel like it gives you uh, a lot of optimal depth perception on balloon popping. Because you can hit them pretty much anywhere. This loop, this loop, this loop, and even kind of as they come in here, no problems here. Uh, and you don't have to worry about putting them in the corner here and, like, not being able to aim and stuff like that. So this will be a somewhat micro-intensive strategy, admittedly. But I think we could pull it off pretty easily. But one thing I have to worry about is I need to make sure that I've got everything covered as soon as I possibly can. So uh, let's get to uh, just kind of chilling here and let's get these guys kind of going. I think what I'm going to do, believe it or not, I'm just going to go for the wall fire. Oh, no! 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 Okay, guys, we're back. Uh, I just had to restart the game from round one because my wall of fire ended up being on the bottom here instead of being on the top, which I'm not sure how much that would matter, but I feel like every little bit's going to matter here. I'd rather start four minutes over rather than lose on round 99 because I didn't get my wall of fire in the right spot. So here he is. He does put it down in the right spot. Absolutely delicious. And actually, this might even be even better. Uh, bigger balloons should get affected uh, as they come around here twice. It's pretty sweet. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky, kind of early game before you get like any good third or fourth tier towers here. Uh, you have to decide how you want to end up uh, getting your upgrades. Like, what's the best tower for us to go for? And I think the best all-around tower, just in general, pops all types of balloons, gets rid of camos, and all that good stuff here is gotta be our shimmering Necromancer. But he costs $3,000. And that's not no uh, easy thing to just develop magically over here or something like that. 
So, we're going to have to save up. And that means we're going to require ourselves to do a little bit of micro here. But honestly, it shouldn't be too bad here. Dartling Gun's not that hard to micro. And the wizard kind of just does his own thing. So, we'll just wait this out. A couple more rounds. Get this guy and feel comfy. Whoa, ha, 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 ha. Necromensa. So, this guy might not be all that wonderful right now. Because the balloons are going to end right here. But I'm really, really hoping. And once I finally get to the Prince of Darkness, it will change. And those balloons will go all the way up into this circle at the very least. I'm hoping. But uh, one thing that uh, changed mainly um, in some of the previous updates is that Pod is much, much weaker than it used to be, and the blooms don't go as far unless you get the top path upgrade. Sadly, I needed the Wall of Fire, and I needed that lead popping power, so getting this all actually to happen was just a little, little kind of weird. Uh, personally, I love the top path Pod combo. It just doesn't really work for two tower chimps unless you get other lead popping power. And with my tower, I'm not planning on getting it. I could even push it if I want to. Plus, round 28 doesn't give you enough money to make it all happen. And you can't do any weird Geraldo plays where you're gluing things and toteming things and crush all the leads in, in uh, this this guy in one swoop. So, a lot more swoopage for us today. But what I want to do is I want to get... Ooh, what do you guys think? You guys want to get a Ray of Doom? You guys want to get a Mad? Or how about we get a bug shot? How about we go for the Bears? The Bayes Tower in the world. The Bloon Exclusion Zone. That's why I positioned him specifically right here. Because I think that uh, popping him down in the corner, no problem. You can still like work your magic and all that stuff. But this really just feels like the next level of awesomeness. Hitting balloons pretty much anywhere on the screen here. And just straight up dominating them. So here we go. We got Buckshot. Uh, I'm going to just lock him in place for now. And I feel pretty comfy that until... Well, no, no, might, might need to micro a little bit. But beyond that, I feel very comfy until probably around, like, 60 or something. 63 might be the first round where I might actually, like, start to lose pretty bad. But at that point, we have to decide if we want to go for a blue nerd denial system or just try to save out for the pod. Um, either way, it should work out pretty good, but yeah. Uh, as far as my cross path goes, I'm usually a pretty big fan of the faster barrel spin. I think it's, it's not a, a straight-up necessite. But it just really, really, really helps out. So I, I like it a lot better. Um, neither way is going to give me lead popping power. I am going to rely on full pod awesomeness for all of my DDT popping power here. So we're going to have to look at that. But uh, hopefully it goes well. Just to kind of confirm our absolute dominance, this is round 49. This is usually a pretty difficult balloon level. I mean, if, if we're ever going to like die to balloons, it's probably going to be on round 49. And, I mean, besides this being a little bit scary, watching the balloons go near the end of the map, they're not even getting close. I mean, they're just getting exploded by the balloons as soon as they get in here. Uh, Regional Balloon's a little scarier, but luckily we do take those... Oh, take those guys down. And they we're ready for it. Blue Nair Denial System. What I love about Blue Nair Denial System is I can go for Target Independent. No more Micro for Chris. Just watch the balloons all get destroyed. Life is good, my friends. Life is good. Honestly, the next round that I think I'm going to see, guys, is probably round 63, just to see if we can get a pot up and uh, defend it. I think too many people underestimate this tower right here, the Blue Nerd Denial System. It's got a lot of buffs recently. Specifically, the third tier just keeps getting buffed, 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 which just, like, automatically buffs the fourth tier uh, pretty decently. Uh, not having to micro, sending ceramics backwards, and having a lot of just regular balloon popping power is pretty absurdly awesome. And if you alchemize them, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. He really only has one weakness, and that's lead balloons. So if you have something that pops leads and or can deal with the DDTs, this guy is absurdly, absurdly good. Look at this. Even reinforced mobs getting popped in the first circle here. That's awesome. Now here's where it gets interesting. Round 63. Blue Nerd and System will actually pop all the balloons here. That's pretty awesome. Oh, wait, it's getting a little closer here. It's getting a little closer. Crushing the balloons. All right, last set here, we were kind of having leads get in the way right now because this guy is not popping all the leads automatically. I don't have any boosts or anything like that. I don't have any more crushing abilities. But this is the last set of balloons, and we do take them down. Now, here's the question. Here's the question. This is a big question. It's a beefy question. I was trying to I don't know the answer. Should we get a pod? Or should we go for the balloon solution zone? I'm trying to save up for this guy. I mean, he's only another $30,000 here. That's probably going to be around, like, 82 or something like that play. It might be possible. But to be straight with you, I think it's a little too sketchy. It's a little too scary for myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go for the pod. Here he is, Prince of Darkness, on round 65. And we get to test and see 
If our balloons are going to go as far as I hope that they will. Yes. Kind of. It's okay. It's okay. It's not bad. Maybe the BFBs will go a little bit further once we finally get those guys going. Um, the graveyard does go down pretty quickly here. And our honestly, our range is pretty small. So unless we're popping things specifically in this little tiny area here, our graveyard isn't going to be that awesome. So, uh, I don't know. I'm a little scared long term. We'll see. He's really, really good. But he's not all powerful. So, uh... Uh, BFPs are dying faster than Moabs. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Uh-oh. This could be a mistake. This could be an utter terrible mistake. We could have done it. We could lose on round 99. All right. Let's see where it leads us. I'm curious how round 76 is going to go. Uh, actually, not bad at all. I think we hit the BFP. The BFPs hit the ceramics or something like that. That was pretty nice. This guy didn't do all that damage, did he? Look at the, look at the pop counts, though. I mean, we're actually very, very similar here. And usually I would say that pod is like the necessary ingredient to most two tower chimps things. But for only like 15,000 compared to like 40,000, much, much better than I would have anticipated. I'm pretty happy. Though Bez is going to be tough. Saving up that much money by round 82 or whatever. Oh, I'm a little afraid. I'm a little afraid. You can even see on round 78 here. These ceramics were already getting very, very far, but I haven't had to use the crusher. Too much yet. All right, the Summer God's actually being a little tricky here. Uh, we're running out of Graveyard, which is not fun. But, uh, yeah, we're definitely running out of Graveyard here. Uh, let's go for a Crush. But the Graveyard ru almost runs out here for round 81. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. We have to really hope that we pop some balloons inside of this guy. Otherwise, it's going to be bad. Uh, down to zero Graveyard. Zero, 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 zero. Okay, build it up, build it up. We got 10, zero. Zero again. 28, four, zero. Okay, well, this is not good. Uh, down to one graveyard. How the heck am I supposed to do this? Oh, okay. Well, we lost. So we might need to take Micro into our own hands here. And try to just pop all the balloons directly in front of our pod so we can keep up his graveyard. And see if this is going to be good enough. Uh, if it's not, I don't know what else we could do to make this better. Truthfully, do not. All right, pop all the ceramics right here, right here, right next to my wall of fire and all that stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Pop them bow webs, pop them bow webs. Shoot them backwards. Get that graveyard flowing. Get that graveyard flowing. Oh, yeah, we got the graveyard flowing. Oh, yeah, now we got the graveyard flowing. There we go. All right. So, target independent is good, but it has its flaws, as you can plainly see. Uh, we got to keep this graveyard as high as we possibly can. I think one thing that we can do because we just lock them in place right here if we want. I'm just too lazy. <laughs> Why am I so lazy? Lock them in place. Target independent. Chris, just aim these guys. Uh, I probably should. Let's just leave him locked in place for now and see how it goes. For whatever reason, though, these mobs are getting further on the map for us, which actually kind of helps us out a little bit. Um, overall, not too shabby, though. Again, keeping this guy kind of locked in place just locks the ceramics right there, so they have to get popped by something. And we're only 10 ish thousand dollars away from our inclusion zone, and the things will change pretty drastically once we get that guy flowing. Oh, yeah, look at this, dude. 84. I think we're going to get it here. And we're keeping the graveyard flowing. Locking me in place right here was actually much, much better than I anticipated. All right, it's game time, baby. Bloon exclusion zone. And I'm going to try to leave him on target dependent for a little while. He might just pop enough balloons anyways. It just doesn't matter. Uh, but Oh, snap. He can reach this. Oh, my God. It's that far away. That's awesome. I didn't realize his range improved so much with that. And that is delicious. That's why we like the bloon exclusion zone. He is a powerhouse. He's actually really, really good against the big bloons. And also pretty good against the small bloons. Ceramics and everything get knocked back automatically, so they're, they're gonna get popped eventually. It's kind of like this guy with a, 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 a dark champion would be like, oh, oh, so uber su superb to do like a two tower chimps with, if you can get enough money to do a dartling gun start. Which sadly, is not possible unless you gotta go with the community page and just make your own challenge kind of situation. This is actually really tricky, so we have to make sure we have a max, try, to have a max graveyard at the end of round 89. Uh, I can't go back in time. All I can do is just make sure that if this guy starts to hit Bluton somewhere else, I have to aim him down and get Max Graveyard up. Try to time it perfectly, hopefully. Uh, it's going okay, it's going okay. Good Graveyard, good Graveyard. And we do, we end with about 3,000 for round 90. Uh, and this is where DDTs are really going to be squeezed into existence, my friends. Can we take down round 90? Can we take down round 95? And can we take down round 99? Don't forget about that. Round 99 is... Probably more difficult than round 95 with a pod 
as your solo lead popping power. Because you're doubling the health. Doesn't matter how many balloons are coming out, you're doubling the health of those DDTs themselves, and the pod can only do so much damage with these balloons. So, uh, for 95, I think I'm gonna be okay, but for 99, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. It could come down to stupid positioning, stupid luck, uh, making sure I have the main uh, amount of popping power on round 98, main graveyard, and all that good stuff. So we actually have to kind of plan this out and think ahead on these rounds to make sure our graveyard is planned properly. Oh crap, I kind of forgot DDTs exist on round 93, but it looks like these BFBs are beautiful. They are hitting over here. Oh my god, I'm a smoke monkey. They are hitting over here. Uh, uh, before they wrap around and do everything. And that is awesome. That means that this entire area is basically a death zone. <laughs> yes. All right, 94 is a bunch of regular balloons. Um, we're still keeping our graveyard pretty high, so things are going swell. Against some of my gods and such. I still think it's going to be the same thing. I think until we get to reinforced balloons, we don't have any issues. Reinforced balloons could be a little bit trickier, but balloon solution zones act pretty solid against those guys. All right, round 95. So keeping the graveyard pretty high here is pretty important. And I'm having some trouble against lead balloons right now. Oh, snap. Get to work, wizard. Get to work, pod. This could be tricky. This could be really, really tricky. I still got him on target to defend it here, but the leads are getting in the way entirely. Uh, darn. Straight darn. Mega darn. Uber darn. Said 95 wasn't going to be too bad, but this is actually very, very scary. Looks like the pod is just, just powerful enough here to keep me in play and make sure I get through them DTs. Alright, still got him on target independent here, not having to take over just yet. Just a little bit of slowdowns, a little bit of crushing, you know, ready to go whenever we need it. Uh, this seems like a pretty easy level. It seems like the, almost the exact same thing as 94, doesn't it? Just a bunch of random balloons and some group zombie gods at the end. Uh, I guess we just gotta make sure again our pod is kind of still keeping up over here. 3,000-ish, and we're good. You can't you can't keep it forever. I mean, no matter what, it takes time for balloons to get to come in here and everything. Um, but you can control, to say, the end of the round, having as close to 3,000 as possible is good news. So here we go. We're going to really change this guy to this, and I'm going to not hit those ceramics on the other side. I'm going to try to hit these other guys and keep that uh, pod fully encompassed with bloonage. And uh, that's before round 98 here. Oh, oh! wasn't that good. It was okay. 2600. That's good enough. Alright, we're gonna aim the Zoma Gods here for a second. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take over this micro skill, skillage right here. I'm gonna aim the Zoma Gods. I'm just gonna aim right down here for a little while, get the max popping power out of these puppies. Let the pod actually get to work here. Pod's gotta get to work. We gotta switch back over, switch back over. We're actually popping balloons to the very, very back back here. I wanna pop some of these balloons next to the pod, though. Keep them uh, 3,000 graveyards up here. Looks like we are definitely doing that. Lots of BFB still on the screen, though, guys. Lots of BFB still on screen. Don't forget, I do want to make sure we got to try our very best to keep that 3,000 uh, graveyard here. So we're going to swap this up for a quick second. I'm going to keep a few balloons kind of next to my pod, if at all possible. Oh, crap. All right, we might have screwed up here. All right, what's our pod going to be at? Oh, baby, 2,700. Okay, not horrible. Not horrible. But this is round 99. This is a tricky round. All right, we are decamboizing a lot of these guys. I'm going to aim the Moabs here instead of the DDTs. Uh, I don't know if I have to crush here. I've got my hand on escape just in case. Uh, we're going to try to pop these balloons if we can. DDTs getting destroyed at the very end of the map, and we do. We take them down. Absolutely delicious. Pod for the win. Firehawk coming in like a babe. And uh, the blue exclusion zone should save the day today, but I need to make sure I've got that DDT. <gasps> Will we have enough DDT popping power here for the balloons inside of the bad here? Uh-oh. I'm a little afraid. I'm a little afraid. We only got 600 right now. 500. 400. Here we go. DDT's got to get popped. DDT's got to get popped. DDT's do not get popped. Oh my god. What are we going to do? I don't know the answer. But I'm going to try to pop the bat a little bit quicker. Uh, by perfect aiming. And then I think what I have to do is I, I don't know if I can even crush the DDTs at all. But I'm going to try. I'm going to put this guy in target independent for a quick second here. Target independent. I'm going to get ready to crush these DDTs and see if that's going to be enough uh, to help me out. Because I have a graveyard of about 500 when this guy wears off. That's not nothing, but it's not good either. Crush the DDTs. Is that going to be enough though? Is it going to be enough? Come on. Come on. Come on. Crush them. Yes! It was enough! An expert level crush right there. 
and we take them down, the balloons inside of this, oh my god, are gonna equal nothing for us. And we have done it. A delicious two tower chips with a balloon exclusion zone and a well-placed wizard. Beautiful. Now it opens up the question, what other two tower chimps are possible? I think there's a lot of options for us. And I think I might delve into this if you guys are interested. So if you are interested, press that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, have a super duper delicious day.